Hey what's up guys, my name is Severman and welcome back to another video on my channel. So I recently had quite a few people asking me, yo, what are like the best render settings for FL Studio for any other DAW? So I thought that would be a great topic for a video. So I'm basically going to show you how I render out my tracks, like what settings I use. And I'm also going to give you some advice on what labels want, like what kind of settings. But before we dive into the video, I just want to say thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community for creative and curious people. It offers over 25,000 inspiring classes on topics including music production, marketing, graphic design, photography and more. No matter if you're a beginner, a pro or a master, Skillshare has classes to fit your specific skill level. I recently just took this class called Learn How to Mix Music by the Grammy-nominated producer Young Guru, which I found super valuable. Especially the advice he gives on placing your elements in the stereo field is super interesting to me. So I can definitely recommend this class to you as well. The good thing about Skillshare is that it's completely ad-free and what I also really enjoy is that each class is divided into several chapters, meaning it's very easy to follow and understand the content. So for the sponsorship, the first 1000 people to click the first link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. All right, so I've just opened up the project file of my latest song, Need You Now. And there are a few things that I always do before I actually go to the render tab. So what I first of all do is I always go to the audio settings or to uh, like, I'm not sure how it's called, like to the, the project credit settings. And you can open these up by pressing F11. And what I always do is I put the title of my track into this line. So for this track, it's Severman, Need You Now. It's the extended mix in this case. So what this will do is once you render out your track, it will basically show the title in, in this section right here when you open up the folder with your track and with your um, different versions. So where this comes in handy is when, for example, you're working on the mix down of your track or like if you're just working on a track in general, if it's not finished yet and you want to export different versions of your track you can basically put in the title as i've just shown you and then we'll basically show you the title of your track if you already got a name for it but then if you go to the render tab you can give it like a certain um, version like a name certain name for a version so for instance mix um, mix master 5 or something and then like here will show mix master 5 but then it will still show the the name of the track so you know okay this is like this version of this track which i think is really cool so that's one thing that i do before exporting my track obviously you could also fill out the other um sections here like general or whatever but yeah i just fill out the title and then that's it in, in this section then the second thing that i do before exporting my track is i always select the certain part that i want to export so for example what i did in this trick i have a volume fade out at the end of the track which is this volume automation right here. So this means I always manually fade out my track at the end because I really want to make sure it's stopping the way I want it to stop. So I don't want to have like a crazy long reverb or a delay effect at the end, but I neither want to have it like cut out like without any smooth fade out. So basically I just, I always yeah, I do this like automation at the end of my track. And then, yeah, what I do is I basically mark this entire section where my track is in. So I have, yeah, the start of the track, which is right at the beginning in this case. Yeah, and then basically here we have the outro and this is where, yeah, the track stops at the end. So yeah, and these are pretty much the two things that I do before exporting the track. So yeah, let's actually head over to the export um, page. So yeah, like if you don't know it, you go to files here at the top left and then you choose export. And here you already make like the first decision. Like here you can already um, set the file that you want to export. Like if you want to uh, export a WAV file, an MP3 flag or whatever, or if you want to export your MIDI files. So usually when, I, when I'm still in the process of making the track, I always export an MP3 version of my song because like there is a lot of like, um, yeah, like a lot of people are saying our oh, MP3s 
not good and always export in wave but that's not necessarily true like obviously of course like on the paper wave is obviously better but if you export an mp3 in 320 kilobytes per second it sounds just fine and i can't tell the difference if i'm listening to that mp3 version in 320 kilobytes per second or to a wave so i think mp3 is actually a pretty good file because it also saves you tons of um, space on your hard drive so um yeah let's let's just put in the name down here so in this case it would be severman uh need you now obviously like that okay i can't type so then fl studio opens up this rendering tab where you can really dial in your settings how you want to export your song so you have quite a lot of options to to choose so um, this one i always have set to song selection obviously because we don't want to export our patterns so then the tail i always have it set to cut remainder because that is why i previously selected the part of the track that i really want to export so basically with this we'll make sure there's like no long reverb fade out where nothing's really playing anymore so i basically set this to cut remainder so yeah, then we have our actual output format. So again, when I work on the track and I just want to export like a quick um, version of the track to kind of, you know, reference it back when I continue work on the track, I always balance out an MP3 with a bit rate of 320 kilobytes per second. But when I export the final versions of my track, I also always export that same MP3 with the same settings, but then I also activate the wave option and then i also bounce out a wave with 16 bit so this is also what the labels usually want for instance with review recordings they always want an mp3 and then they also want a wave in 16 bit so uh, you can also obviously export 24 bit um, gives you a bit better quality like 32 bit is probably a bit overkill um, but yeah, I would uh, recommend to just leave it on 16-bit because I think it's good enough and also it's not as huge as a 24-bit and um, yeah, it's also like the CD standard so if you write your music onto a CD then just go with the 16-bit wave version and uh, yeah, so if you have both selected and you export them it basically exports the wave and the mp3 at the same time so that's something which is really cool you don't have to like um, do it separately you don't have to export the mp3 first and then the wave so it's really cool so uh yeah this stereo i just leave it on stereo because yeah i want to export the stereo version i don't want to uh export any mono version i don't there's there's no reason for that to be honest then with the quality i don't think i've ever changed anything in here um like the 32 point sync like you can also like bump this up to 512 but i think uh the 32 is fine as well um so yeah then here again i i've never really changed anything i just i just leave them like that and then let's talk about the last section so in here you have you can like select if you want to save any like playlist markers or like any markers in the track that you have created so in fl studio you can for example set markers at certain points for example you can set a marker at your drop to have that mark or when you for example want to skip a section you can also in fl studio do that let me show you that real quick so for that you basically click on that little arrow right here then you have the time markers add one then you can give it a name like whatever um drop one or like whatever you want to call it i don't know and then you can like drag it around and stuff so here's the first drop And let's say I want to jump from the first drop to the second drop. What I could do then is I just go to the second drop right here. Then I add another one. You can, I think you can also right click here and then yeah, add marker, drop two. And what I could do is now is I can right click on here and then I can skip this marker and then we'll basically jump from the first drop to the second drop. So I think that's a really cool tool if you want to yeah, get rid of a certain section in your track uh, without needing to like mess around with the whole project file because that's also something which I've done in Get Me Out, I think. I, I had um, eight bars in the, more in the second break, I think, but I wanted to get rid of those because I felt like the second break was getting too long. 
And then I basically just created two markers to skip those eight bars. So I didn't need to like mess around with all my automation clips and stuff. So that's really handy. But yeah, let's get back to, to the export um, section. So you can basically choose if you want to um, have these markers shown in, in your final um, export. And then you can also save your uh, tempo information. So we'll basically save the BPM of your track, which is really cool. Um, you can split your mixer tracks, obviously, if you want to export stems. Um, but yeah, we don't want to do this now. We want to export our final song um, files. So uh, yeah, I don't activate that one. Um, trim PDC songs is, for instance, when you have um, like a lot of third-party plugins, they always um, cause a bit of delay. So with, with that trim, you can basically get rid of it and we'll basically remove any gap at the beginning of your track that you would have due to those plugins. Um, yeah, but then you have enable insert effects. So these are basically the effects on your individual mixer channels. Um, yeah, then you have your, your master chain if you want to have your, your mastering enabled. So let's say for instance, if you want to export the unmastered version and then you want to master it in the separate version, you can basically disable the master effects. But yeah, that's pretty much everything with the render settings. So yeah, I think we covered everything. So yeah, I hope you like this little render settings tutorial for FL Studio or like this also applies for any other DAW obviously. So um, also once again, thanks Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And remember the first 1000 people to click the first link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So definitely check that out. So yeah, I hope you liked this video. Make sure to leave a thumbs up if you did so. Make sure to comment with your feedback, subscribe if you haven't. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.